Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've joined us this morning. We'd love for you to say hello in the chat at the side. And we also would like you to know that later in the service, we'll be celebrating the Sacrament of the Lord's Supper. So make sure you get the elements so you're ready to join in at that time. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come, let us worship our living God. Let us join in our prayer of confession. God of grace, you send signs of love in people who care, but often we shut these people out. We turn away your love when we need it the most. We deny your hope within us and we keep ourselves isolated and afraid. Visit us with your salvation, for we await you in need. Amen. Friends, this is the good news. God's love for us is so deep and so wide that Christ lived for us, Christ died for us, Christ rose again in love of us. Amen. Greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace to everybody. May the peace be with you. May the peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be 
with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning once again, everyone, and welcome to the Children's Sermon. Today, I'm going to teach you how to play some poker. Are you ready? So, I've got some poker chips here. i got some cards, and we're going to be playing poker today and, and trying to figure out what makes a good bet. Because the game of poker is all about making good bets based off the hand that you got. And so, basically, it goes if you got a good hand, you place a big bet. You're like, oh, I'm going to like say that these chips represent money. I'm going to say, I think I'm going to win this bet. You put these chips in, you put them on the table, and you say, boom, I'm going to throw down some cards and get some, some great potential money won here. All right? But in the game of poker, you got to make a, a guesstimate or a, a, a risk based off of what your cards are and what the other people's cards are that you can't see. So everything here becomes a probability. Sometimes you have good cards. Sometimes you don't. So sometimes it makes sense to put some money in and to say, here, I want to bid some chips and see if I can get some money back. Or sometimes it's like, no, nah, no, nah, maybe you shouldn't put money in. But today we're going to change it up a little bit because that's the basics of poker. But we're not in life to get, play a game of poker on the table like this. Sometimes in the game of life, we're in it to potentially be in the game of becoming Jesus' disciple. Now that is a serious poker game. And that is a game that we have to play every single day of our lives. How are we choosing to live? And in this game of poker, it's the same thing. We've got cards. We've got gifts. We've got talents. We've got thoughts. We've got hopes and dreams. Uh, we have ways to spend our time and our, our energy and, our, and our, share our feelings with others. Uh, we have a really strong hand to play, but sometimes we don't play it very strongly or sometimes we feel as though we don't have the right cards to play. And just like in that game of poker before, I'll tilt my screen down, we have all this all – this, uh, all these resources in which to potentially try to negotiate with or, or share. But in the game of, of disciple, excuse me, disciple poker, um, there's, there's something we got to learn. And here's the tough news. Whereas we think we have the hand and that we're in control, that's really not the case. We actually learn in Psalm 139 that instead of trying to make bets on probability and whether you think you're going to be good enough compared to other people or what's on the table, we learn in Psalm 139 that God actually knows us and knows our hands before we even play them. Listen to this. This is what Psalm 139 says. We heard this earlier. It says, Lord, you've searched me. You know me. You know when I rise or when I sit. You know my thoughts. You know where I'm going. You even know a word that I'm going to speak before it's on my tongue. So therefore, having this risky game that we might be playing, it changes the way of the look and the feel. And the other thing we learn that Jesus teaches us, he says, okay, uh, sometimes you're going to feel like you're going to put some chips in. You feel like being a disciple today. Or sometimes we're like, oh, I don't really have maybe the right cards. I don't really feel like being a disciple today. Well, that's Jesus isn't content with that. He says, you know what? The only way to play this game is the only way to live. And the only way to live is by following my teaching. So, for example, what does is, what is following Jesus look like? It looks like trusting him. It looks like loving others. It looks like, uh, you know, even when it's, even when it's tough, uh, trying to be merciful or receive mercy. Uh, it means forgiving ourselves and forgiving others. It means living our lives uh, not to fulfill our selfish plans and like, yeah, I really want to go do this or experience that or get these things. But living his plan and seeing how we can use our gifts, our talents, to advance his kingdom, and especially sharing that with those people around us. So how much would you bid in the game of trying to become a disciple, disciple poker? Well, Jesus says, guess what? The only way to bid is not to go piecemeal. I'll do it this time, but not this time. I'll do this. I'll feel good. No, no. He says, 
you got to be all in. And this is one of my favorite things of poker. Check this out. Maybe sometimes you see this in the movie. I want to make sure we get the effect here. Check it. He says, no matter what the cards are, he's going to be there. He's going to walk with us. He's going to, he's going to make it happen with us. We got to trust him. And the only way to be is to say, you know what? No matter what we have, no matter what resources we think that we can have control over, we need to be all in. We need to put all of this. Look at this. Look how many chips are on the table. Those are all the chips on the table. Everything that we have. He says, the only way to be a disciple is to be all in. Come walk with me. But you've got to be all in. So my challenge for us today is to think about not how we are holding back and gauging probabilities of whether or not we're going to be successful in something or other, or maybe we're going to, we're going to experience hurt or be hurt along the way, because that's certainly part of the journey. But my hope for us today is to say we're going to be all in no matter what it takes to be a disciple of Jesus, to walk with him, let everything else go to the side, be all in, and focus our energy, our mind, and our resources on him.
from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, beginning with verse 27. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able, with 10,000, to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Jesus says, who among you wouldn't count the cost before you set out on a major project? As if that's an obvious step, something that everyone does, which made me stop and wonder, do we? Do we count the costs in our lives? What does counting the cost look like today? This woman I know, she felt like the people who worked for her needed to connect outside of work to better work together. So she sent them an evite to a party at her home on a Saturday night. Only five of the 30 people came. The RSVP said, great idea to have a party, can't make it. Eventually she realized they did not want to give up their weekend time. If the party had been a lunch during the week, that might have worked. But this event for 25 of the people, the cost was too high. Maybe the 25 had decided time with family and friends over the weekend was more important, more worth the cost. Maybe they saw it as the principle of the thing, not wanting to give away their time. She went on with a small party for the five that came and they did get to know each other better and they did have fun together and bonded in a way that did make their work lives better. For them, the cost seemed to be worth it. Once many years ago now, I was a CPA and I did the taxes of a young man who when I got to the question about the contributions, he said, do people really do that? Give money away? Yes, I told him many, many people do that. He was kind of a deep young man and he took in the answer I'd given and said, really, what is that like to give money away and get nothing for it? Well, I said, I think that people feel like they are getting something for it, like they're part of something bigger than themselves maybe, or whatever they're giving to, they wanna connect with. And that means everybody's life is about more than them. At least that's what I imagine to be true. I think about that conversation that happened decades ago and I think about it, what it means to me to give. And I recognize that what I said was true. I do want to feel like part of something bigger than myself. That I'm helping people in need physically and emotionally and spiritually. That I'm doing the work that Christ wants me to do in the world. And I think when people give to organizations, like the American Cancer Society or the American Heart Association, I think that those gifts are given with hope that something can make a difference in the journey with those diseases. Those gifts are a vote to say no to the pain and the suffering that people experience. When we donate, we count the cost and we decide that the cost is worth it. In this passage, Jesus is saying this journey of discipleship it is a journey that will cost you. Following me will change your life. You don't want to get into this and not understand that it costs. You don't want to get into this as if it's some sort of free, easy ride. What kind of costs do we need to count to be present to this journey of discipleship today? Following Jesus might make us different from other people. We might have to live according to values that aren't typical in today's world. 
It's really a shift in our mindset, a decision that we're going to live lives that value the words of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, the connection we experience with other people and with God through the Spirit of God. It's a decision that we will be intentional in living life differently, giving of who we are and what we are in a way that lets the light of Christ shine through us. For some people, the cost of discipleship will be a little bit, day by day by day. A kindness we extend every time we get the chance. Moments spent in reading the Bible day after day. In prayer. A thankfulness that comes into our lives for the gifts we've been given and a desire to spread them. A willingness to put someone else's needs on our priority list. For some people, though, the cost of discipleship will feel like they come all at once. Maybe the cost when we recognize all of a sudden that something we've been doing without thought or worry has a negative effect on other people. And once we know we can't unknow the truth, that our lives affect other people. And following Jesus means we have chosen to value others' lives as our own. I went to church with a young man who had an epiphany one day. His job was calling people up and selling them a product. And he knew that his product was actually exactly the same as everyone else's, just with a different label. But that's not what his job told him to say on the phone. We were in the middle of a Bible study and he said, I tell lies for a living. And we all stopped and we listened and we helped him think about what to do next. Because once he knew what he knew in the context of his life of faith, he could not go back. That's the real cost of discipleship, I think. It gets underneath everything you do and causes you to really look at whether what you're doing lines up with what Jesus has taught us about living life here as if we really do wanna bring the kingdom of God here. The cost is high, but the value in living a life that is spiritually filling, connected, true on the deepest of levels, I don't think there's anything better this side of heaven. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper today, may we take the opportunity to decide whether we are ready to say yes to the cost of following Jesus in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.
We are welcome to this table by our Lord Jesus Christ. And we invite you, wherever you are, to share in this communion meal today. For they shall come from the north and the south, the east and the west, to feast at this table, the great banquet of the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the beauty of your creation. We celebrate the gift of life and give thanks that you are working in the world and you're working in the church throughout the world. We give thanks for the gift of your son, for Jesus. We are filled with gratitude for his love for us, his sacrifice for us. We remember him in this meal, knowing that on the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, we pray that in this feast, we may be united wherever we are in communion with all the faithful in heaven and across the earth. We pray for those in need this day, those who are hungry, those who need shelter, those who are living in the midst of danger and violence and war. We pray for those who are ill, those who grieve. May we be instruments of your peace and love and hope in all that we do, all that we are. We pray that we might be nourished through this meal, this foretaste of the great banquet of the kingdom of God. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us faithful as Christ's body, representing Christ and doing God's work in the world. Bind us with Christ and with each other. Let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken in love of us. The cup of the new covenant, Christ's blood poured out in love of us. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may we be so nourished and nurtured by this meal that we might feel ready to say yes to you, to follow you into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us go forward from this place, certain in our knowledge of the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Here is the rainbow I've been 
going straight ahead There's nothing but blue